Gives back to Carr, who's starting to feel it a little bit. Carr, Lavo Turo, and a dunk! Being at this place for seven years, it's special when you get guys like Daniel Turo. Showing his ability to shoot the ball, take guys off the dribble, brings a huge defensive presence. I think the biggest thing that he is is he's productive. When you're shooting 60 plus percent from the field, when he's getting a lot of attention. I mean, I'm no dummy. Let's get him the ball. He's real passionate about the game. He likes to celebrate. You know, you see him flexing. He just gives us energy, and whenever he's doing that, you know, the guys are able to feed off it. It's almost remarkable that he's been able to do some of the things that he's done, still on raw potential. I feel like I'm a basketball enthusiast. It's always fascinating to see like players back in the 70s and 80s compared to now, and so the game is so different. I'll get random texts at 10 o'clock at night, hey coach, and I'm like, oh goodness, what, what's going on? Is there something serious? How many points do you think Pete Maravich would average a game in today's NBA? I'm like, Dan, I, I have no idea. My dad told me that I should try to study players and stuff like that more and try to take bits and pieces from their games. I watched Luca Garza. It was just fascinating for me to see how hard he posts for an entire possession. I just try to do the best I can to imitate that because then that will help me down low because that's the main part of my game. There you go. Jump hook right over to him. And I see Stig Smith being able to shoot the ball helps Maryland a lot because the spacing is better. And I'm like, okay, bet. I got to work on that and try to start knocking down threes so I can have my team space it four out. Now two has to fire for three. Dan started stepping out, shooting threes, and I, I said, Dan, by all means, man. You know, three's worth more than two. Please fire away. I think the more that his skill development improves, you know, the more he puts in the work, Daniel's going to make teams pay. Without ping pong, my life would probably be different. My mom and dad, were born and raised in Nigeria. My dad, growing up, eventually got into ping pong, and he became really good at it. In Nigeria, our priority is soccer and table tennis. Table tennis, you can see every loop and corner in the country. I started learning, then I became a local champion in my neighborhood. Then I was invited into the national team. I started representing my country. My first time to the U.S. was in 1983. I got to Detroit. They have U.S. Open Team Championship. We were able to win the championship. The Bhutanese brought us to the United States because uh, my husband came to play. The last time he decided that I'm going to stay. So maybe I can find a better opportunity for me and my family. And uh, that is exactly what happened. My three children were born here. Daniel was born in New York. The younger ones were born here in Minnesota. Daniel, initially when he was growing, he is not really interested in playing table tennis. When I was younger, my dad tried to teach me, but I was just something I never really wanted to get into. I just liked hoops better. I remember one day my wife bought him a basketball then he has interest in that. And then we can see that, oh, he loves to play basketball, so we leave him with other kids in the street. He has passion for the game. Drop step and a dunk! I need more space on my score sheet. Oturu with 23. I'll definitely get my height from my mother, who is 6'2". My dad's 5'6". If I can get my athletic ability and my coordination from him, my dad is like my best friend. He's followed me across everywhere basketball's taken me. You know, he's supported me. I want him to be successful in life. Where he is now is so amazing. He was able to accomplish so many things. It's really awesome for my dad to be able to come to a country like this, build a life, and to raise a family. And ping pong is a huge part of that.